Hi, I'm Tony Fleming, and this is Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Hey, thanks for joining us on today's video. You know, in the world of muscle cars and things like that, whether you're a Mopar guy, a Ford guy, a Cadillac guy, whatever, when you see cars done to the next level where they're called pro touring cars with full suspensions, big wheels and tires, um, you know, and just great engines and transmissions or whatever, you can see the expense that's put into these things. If a regular car costs X, right, you can imagine these cars here cost an additional 50 to 100% more than those cars to build because you're adding very expensive components to it. So we're going to take a walk around this car here. We're going to see a lot of great things. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to remember everything about the car, so I'm might have to read off this a couple times, so don't beat me up for that. All right, let's start with the paint, because you know what? We start with the paint every time. Some cars are better than others, all right? In this case here, uh, what I'd like to talk about a little bit is uh, the way these cars are painted. For instance here, uh, I like to be able to see uh, all the writing on, the, on here. Matter of fact, come on up here, let's do this, because this is an exposed area. If you go to a car show, this is where you're gonna get picked on. So come on over here and check this out. Very much so the mirror finish. I like to, there's a watch in there so you can see what time it is. That's what you should be looking for. You're looking at pictures online, man. Pictures online can hide a lot of things. So the video in high definition like this makes a big difference, all right? So uh, the one thing I do like to talk about is how the stripes are put on and how they're finished. Anybody can stripe a car, they can do an average job. It takes a lot to finish up the package. And the reason why I keep talking about that is because of the quality and the things that are on this car that make it a little bit better. So for instance, the car is, uh, uh, the body itself is all wrapped up in the prep. You know, you're painting a black car, you really, really have to spend time in the prep. If you're painting your house, a car, uh, a model boat, whatever it is, what's put into the prep determines really the paint job. It's never the painter who really lays down the great paint, it's the prep that goes into it. So this here, great straight body, really nice and stuff, but so they lay down the black paint, they wet sand it, okay? Then they go ahead and they lay down the white paint, right? and they get that all done and that looks great. Then they clear coat the whole thing. And the reason why that's important is most people paint the cars and then clear coat them and then lay the white stripes over. The problem is you can feel the white stripes in those other cars and over time they tear, they wear off and things like that, but the rest of the paint looks good and then you have to do the stripes all over again. And that's a paint. In this case here, it's been clear coated over so you can wipe it down, you can wax it and it just feels great. You can't really even feel uh, the stripes in there. It has plenty of that. The one thing I did do is I dressed it up with some emblems that came in and didn't have anything on it. So I dressed it up with emblems, but I want you to know is they're all stick on emblems. Okay, everything around here, I didn't drill any holes in the body to put those on and they look great. This is a modern set of Camaro emblems, all right? And they just fit this car really well with the great uh, uh, alloys that are on here, the big BF Goodrich uh, Comp TAs, the G-Force, sorry, the G-Force TAs and uh, it just kind of wraps up, gives a modern, yet classic kind of theme to it. But what I really wanted you to see also was how beautiful the paint is down here. Now this is the difference. The difference is the guys that do body work and paint, the guys that are typically painters, and I'm not blaming all the painters out there, so this is not for everybody, so don't kill me, but a lot of painters don't ever bend their knees. What they do is they just turn up the volume a little bit and spray the paint down here, and you don't get great quality paint. So what I wanted to do is let you see how ridiculously smooth and reflective the paint is here. And you can see that somebody spent a lot of time on the body because when you're talking about painting a car black, you could get away with this on a white car or a silver car, uh, especially when we show you these things in those cars, you really can't see the reflection very well. But in a car like this, you gotta spend some time making sure it's right. So let's say you decide, I, I love this car, I'd like to get it, but could I take it to a car show? Well, yes, you could take it to a car show because uh, as you go to that car show, they're going to love the outside and then they, some of the people might even look underneath and that's what we're going to do next. So let's take a peek under here and see what that looks like. Check this out. All painted underneath, braided steel lines, new pans, braided fuel lines, beautiful exhaust system the size of elephant legs, okay? Maybe needs a wiping off or dusting from being driven, but other than that, it looks really, really good. And the fact is, it's all been restored and new and what have you. Okay, so what makes cars better drivers and better lookers than others? Some of the driving issues of this car that make it a better driving car than a lot of others is it's all tied together underneath, on the top, the bottom, everywhere to make it a stronger car. For instance, the, the roll bar uh, that's not in the way of any passengers in the car, but it's in there to tighten things up and it makes it even safer, okay? Goes through the package tray, down the trunk and bolts to the frame back there. This is nice here. I went ahead and I did the modern emblems back here. And like I said, I just stuck them on. Uh, like the new cars are stuck on. They don't drill holes in new cars anymore. They do this right here, and I just did the same thing. I thought it looked great. If you don't like it, they come right off, uh, no big deal. 
So with the RS package, you're gonna get the tail lights here like an SS, but they're gonna move the reverse light down to here, and that looks really nice. Chrome's all good, stainless is good, like all this stuff has been restored. I'm not spending a lot of time talking about the restoration. I'm hoping that you'll take my word for it. The car has been restored. I'm trying to spend some time just showing you the detail, okay? Here's where we wanna take a peek and see some more money spent. Okay, stainless gas tank, which we should probably clean and polish, but MagnaFlow polish stainless exhaust, that's why it looks so nice. It's got a 12 bolt rear in it with a 390 posi. And they're using those special ARP bolts. They're expensive bolts. You say, well, what's the big deal about some, uh, some bolts? Well, if it's 12 there, 12 over there, 12 here, 10 here, 15 there, whatever, it gets to be very expensive. But now you know how these cars can cost upwards of $150,000 to get a great Pro Touring Camaro, okay? All right, so let's take a peek in the trunk for a second. Now, this does not have a mat in it. It comes with a mat, okay? Or we can put a piece of carpet in here for you. But I just wanted to show you how beautiful it is. This is all brand new, all welded in. The battery's been moved in the back back here, okay? It's an Optima battery with a billet uh, battery hold down. You say, well, what's the big deal? Well, the, billet, the, the battery itself is two to three times the price of a regular battery. You could have done a regular steel hold down, but the billet hold down there is another three times the price of a regular hold down. It's the little detail stuff is what I'm talking about, okay? And then uh, if you come up in here, if we could come inside, I don't need to show the rest of this. There's a cool little light here, okay? But up inside here is the rest of the stereo systems. Can you see that in there? It's got the Kenwood uh, amp. There we got the Boss crossovers and all the wiring and things like that for the multiple speakers and head unit and everything like that that goes throughout this car. This is nice, man. This is a cool, these are my Sorry. I just get so excited about them because you know what? I love the old school style, but sometimes you want something that's got a little more juice, a little more handling, it's a little lower to the ground. Like sometimes I like to ride in a GTO, you know, low and slow or, or, or tri-power four speed or whatever. Or sometimes I like to get in these right here and sneak up on a Porsche or a Viper or something like that and spank on by. <clears throat> what now? Okay, let's see what all the fuss is about under the hood. Okay, we're talking about 377 cubic inches. Okay. Hopefully I still know how to open a hood, okay? With some bling underneath here and some modern conveniences too. So we got the power four-wheel disc brakes, okay? We have air conditioning. We have fast ratio power steering. Great stainless lines here, uh, braided stainless. We have polished intake. All that stuff there looks really good so that you can open uh, the hood at a car show and people are gonna go over and go, wow, that is really, really cool. This right here is a filler panel. It's made by DSE. The other thing too is I wanted to show you is, look at the size of this. This is the radiator. The radiator is here with this giant electric fan on it because for me, uh, nothing's worse than sitting in, uh, you know, you go to a car show or sitting in traffic or whatever, you got the AC on if you decide to do that and the car overheats. I cannot stand that. It's embarrassing, uh, it's frustrating and then you gotta sit and wait for it to cool down. I am not interested in that. This guy clearly was uh, feeling the same way I was because if you look, it is massive. The radiator's huge, it's got a great cover, and this right here seals out uh, all the air so the air flows in and goes right through the radiator, so it's really pulling everything through there. It's a Be Cool radiator, I believe, and it's all hand welded up. Overflow tank is even made of billet. Okay, and here's the, the adjustable control arms here, all right, and they're tubular. Probably get a better shot of them right over here. Detroit Speed, Coney coilover shocks all the way around, and they're adjustable as well. Spark plugs are wrapped in, uh, in high temp fabric, fireproof fabric. Air conditioning system, instead of running all the lines across here, they run it inside the fender. You can see the inlets over here. Look how nicely done that is right in the firewall. It's a lot of money spent here, man. Check out the billet breather. That's for the PCV system. That canister with the filter on it, it's for the PCV system. Instead of jamming something on top of here and letting it just smoke its way out, uh, here they've gone ahead and plumbed it and put it over there. It just looks really nice. The only thing left to do on this car, if you wanted to, is either go with a serpentine belt system in the front here, or just put some chrome pulleys on, which we can do. Some people really love the black front here with the black around here, because it just looks sinister. It just makes it look even bigger and meaner. But uh, it's a pretty spectacular piece. The wiper motors there is a DSE uh, wiper motor. It's flat, so it gives some more room in there for the big power brake booster. It's just the little stuff that you may not be seeing right away, that you need to see where the money is spent on the car and why this car is such a great deal. Okay, check this out. This thing is done upright. All right, so it's got the reactive seats in here, beautiful cloth to kind of match some of the rest of the car. Great support up in here in the shoulders to hold you in place. It's got this awesome Momo wheel. 
okay? With tilt steering, killer gauges all the way around. And more importantly, it's got a seat belt system in it. You can just wear a regular lap belt if you want, or it has in the rear, uh, rear shoulder harnesses, okay? And the reason why that's really good is if you decide to do some vintage racing, you could do that in this car. You could go to a Ferrari track day and, and look really good rolling down the front straight, passing a Porsche 911 uh, as he's looking by like, what just happened to me, right? Um, or uh, you could go vintage racing against the other cars that are out there. And because of the suspension, the big wheel and tire setup, and how everything's done, this could be a lot, a lot of fun, all right? Then they throw in some uh, comfort features. We talked about the stereo system. It's a killer sound system with the Pioneer head unit. We looked at the amp, the subwoofer, the speakers, and all that kind of good stuff. This is a uh, vintage iPod holder. You can get another case, if you like, for your smaller version, and it goes right in there, okay? Um, anyway, this has uh, iPod connection, Bluetooth, satellite, like all that good stuff. This console here has got some cup holders. This is a remote right here for the stereo system, all right? And then it has a red button on the shifter ball that can be converted to use for anything you want. It can be if you want to add nitrous to the car, if you want to add line locks to the car, if you want to add this to dial home to the car. It's really cool because it's electrically activated and it can do anything that uh, you ask it to do, all right? Um, it's got three outlets in here for charging your phone. So this thing was designed to go on a long drive. Like you could drive all day long in this car and this was on the Hot Rod Power Tour as well. It was designed to go that way and it's just really very, very comfortable. All the gauges are big with a 10,000 RPM tack, 160 mile an hour speedometer, full sets of gauges for water, oil, fuel and bolts, air conditioning vents in here, and this cool racetrack style mirror up here. Check this out where you can see everything behind you uh, especially who you just passed. Like, look at that. Look how nice that is. All right, it's got a fully custom rear seat, which is covered in the same exact fabric as the front seats are, so it was probably pretty expensive. They had to buy this from them, and it just looked really good. Headliner's new, just an awesome, awesome car. It's got air conditioning controls are right here. I am rambling on a lot, but there's so much to talk about. Anyway, sorry, I get a little giddy when cars like this. You can just see, man. I'm, the effort that goes into these is just enormous. This is like a whole nother job. Like if you go to restore a car, you need to be very secure in the job you got or retired because to restore a car requires you to be involved and it requires a lot, a lot of work. All right, so after you saw that car, the test drive of this thing, let me just run down a couple highlights real quick so you can figure out how you're gonna pay for it, right? Full DSE adjustable suspension, the coilovers, the air conditioning, um, the electric hideaway headlights. The wheels and tires alone were $4,500. I mean, I'm just telling you guys, if you can find a way to get something like this in your life, I'm just looking at here, the six speed that's in it, the 377 cubic inch motor making four, I think we said uh, somewhere around 450 horsepower. Come on, man. these things came, they quoted them at 350 horsepower, or even the high performance ones were 375 horsepower, but that was not uh, net. So that meant that those things were closer to 300, 275 horsepower. This is 450 real deal horsepower. So whatever, if you can find a way, this is the car. Call us 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about the 69 Pro Touring Camaro.